to join us. So welcome again, and thank you for being here with us. So again, I will give um, people the opportunity to join. So we'll allow it about, you know, one or two minutes while we get started. So we are planning to start uh, exactly at 6 p.m. Thank you for being here with us. Again, thank you for joining us. We're gonna wait one more minute while we give uh, people the opportunity to join us. Thank you for being with us again. Okay, I think we're going to get started now. And um, I just want to welcome everyone. It's really an honor and a privilege to be here tonight, um, to welcome every one of you to be uh, here tonight. Um, again, welcome to Senator uh, Brooks' webinar. Um, as we celebrate Women's History Month, our month-long lecture series. Today's lecture is hosted by the Adelphi New York State uh, Wide Breast Cancer Hotline and Support Program. Um, you know, breast cancer, we're going to be focusing on breast cancer awareness. And uh, tonight, our guest speakers will provide you with a workshop on breast cancer prevention and program services and self-care. Um, before we get started, I would like to um, just uh, let you know about some Zoom features. Um, you will see on your screen three different buttons. You're going to see the chat, which you are welcome to use to comment or to share any links. Then we have the Q&A, which can be used to submit any questions that will be addressed um, at the end. You could feel free to just um, ask the questions in this particular section. And then we have the raise your hand option, which you can use if you have any issues with the audio or video. Um, again, uh, I just want to say thank you also to Senator John Brooks. Um, he uh, is not going to be able to join us tonight, tonight as he is uh, driving from Albany this evening, but uh, just want to let you know that he sends his regards and his appreciation for the guests and as well as everybody who's joining us tonight. And again, just want to say that Women's History Month is an opportunity to remember the incredible and accomplishments and the contributions of women throughout our history. In honor of Women's History Month, Senator Brooks is hosting a lecture series the entire month of March regarding issues facing women. Our office is collaborating with local experts and professionals to provide a, a virtual space to discuss and explore various topics related to women. And again, I want to welcome everyone again, and I just want to turn it over to Melody, who will um, introduce our guest speakers. Thank you, everyone, for being with us tonight. Melody? Thank you, Lucia. Um, yes, as Lucia mentioned, it's definitely a privilege and an honor to be um, with you all together and, and have this opportunity to discuss uh, such a topic of importance like breast cancer. So I want to welcome and also thank our guest speakers uh, for joining us and, and being part of this um, conversation to provide us with their knowledge. Um, I would like to first introduce our uh, key speaker, uh, Reina Mach Machado. Uh, she is the executive director of Adelphi New York Statewide Breast Cancer Hotline and Support Program. Um, she's um, 
She's responsible for the overall operations of the program, including fiscal administration of grants, bilingual social work, patient navigation, community outreach, breast health, breast health education, monitoring and evaluation, along with marketing and public relations. Reyna also oversees the program's budget grant writing, reporting, and all developmental efforts. Her role allows her to educate, support, advocate, and empower breast cancer patients, professionals, and the community. She enjoys partnering with volunteers and mentoring Adelphi students, student interns to provide confidential and free breast cancer services to the community. She also serves as the steering com uh, committee for the New York State Cancer Consultorium and is a member of the Cancer Access Consultorium with Northwell Health. She has worked in education, development, and marketing at the Georgetown University, the Girl Scouts of U USA, and Health Day News. She brings almost two decades of leadership and program operations to the dynamic and passionate team of staff, volunteers, and interns at Adelphi. She is inspired by the resilience and positive outlook of breast cancer patients and their families. Uh, Reina is a nati native Spanish speaker and a New Yorker, and she earned her BA and MA from George Washington University and her MBA from American University. She lives with her husband and two sons on Long Island, and their happiest days are spent outdoors. Thank you, Reina, for joining us. I just wanted to turn over to you if you still have any opening remarks um, this evening. Thank you so much, um, Melody and Louisa, um, Lucia for inviting inviting me and Tricia to speak tonight. I also really wanna thank Senator Brooks for the opportunity. Uh, we work with you all year round and it's, it's really lovely to be able to collaborate with you as we raise the importance of women's health and, and access to healthcare. So thank you. Thank you, Reina. Uh, our second guest speaker is Tricia. Um, she is actually a volunteer at the Adelphi uh, Statewide Breast Cancer Hotline and Support Pro Program. Um, and she's with us this evening to discuss um, her experience while supporting her mother um, during her battle with breast cancer. Um, she's a native New Yorker and grew up in Dutchess County and currently resides in Seaford on Long Island with her daughter. She obtained a master's of business administration degree from Baruch College uh, School of Business as well as an undergraduate degree in accounting and marketing from Pace University in New York City. She currently serves as a chief financial officer for the Group One, a distributor of professional audio and lighting equipment headquartered in Farmingdale. She's proud to serve as a volunteer for the Adelphi NY statewide breast cancer hotline and support program. She supported her mother during her battle with breast cancer and ultimately lost her at the age of two, 22, shaped, and it has shaped her life in many ways. She enjoys providing support to the breast cancer community in any way she can. Uh, thank you again, Trisha, for being with us. Um, and we're, we're sorry for your loss, but we're very happy to have you this evening to provide um, your voice and your experience to, you know, to encourage and, and make uh, bring awareness about for other women. So uh, just passing it to you if you want to say any opening remarks. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for having us here. And thanks to Senator Brooks' office for helping us to create awareness around women's health and all the related issues. Thank you, Trisha. Um, at this time, I'll turn it over to Reina. Um, she'll take over and she's gonna be uh, providing us with tons of uh, knowledge this evening. So thank you, Reina. Thank you so much, Melody. I'm going to uh, raise the PowerPoint. Yeah. Share my screen. I want to put it in presentation mode. Sorry. No worries. I'll just do this once I'm in here, 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 and then, yeah, okay, perfect. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Okay, thank you so much. Um, again, thank you so much for having us and for taking the time to, to attend and or rewatch this webinar online on Facebook Live and, and on YouTube after the fact. Um, it's March it's, and we're getting towards the end of Women's History Month, but it's always a good time to think about and learn about breast cancer awareness. Um, our program, of course, which is here 365 days a year and find some ways to take care of yourself as, as we know that this has been a really, it's always stressful, um, but I think the past two years in particular have been 
quite something. And I think we, we hear a lot about self-care, but it's like, how do we actually get there? How do we create a plan? I'm very linear, like I need to write it down or it's, it's not going to happen, right? And so I plan to walk you through a few tangible ways in different areas that you can hopefully focus on and hopefully you can each take a few things away that will improve your overall wellness, mental health, and ultimately um, your health overall. Um, we'll hear from Trisha, who will share her family's journey and, and just the lessons that she learned from her mother and how she's incorporated that with her family, um, which is really beautiful. And then we'll obviously share some ways to become involved with our program and share resources in the event that you need uh, additional support. Um, there are a variety of resources, our program and across Long Island um, for you to uh, seek uh, care. Okay. So... We're here tonight because unfortunately, um, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. Um, the breast cancer incidence rate, meaning the rate of women that are diagnosed with breast cancer is also higher here on Long Island, both in Nassau County, as well as in Suffolk. When you compare the incident rate to Long Island, to New York State, as well as to the country as a whole. So, Part of the problem is that we know that breast cancer is real. And I think many of us here tonight are likely here because either we or someone that we love have been um, deeply and personally impacted by it. Um, and so that's why we're here. Um, the Adelphi New York Statewide Breast Cancer Hotline and Support Program really started in 1980 with a group of women that met in the lower level of the School of Social Work. This was a time when women were not discussing the C word or cancer, let alone breast cancer. And there was a group of women that came for a support group and they really received that mutual aid and had an intimate space to talk. And they benefited from that group so much that they wanted to give back. And they, they actually, the group members, decided that they wanted to create a hotline. And that hotline, was originally called the woman to woman hotline because you didn't say breast cancer out loud, which is really, it's really kind of shocking when you think about it because now there's a whole month and everything's pink and football players have pink and you, you I don't think you can go somewhere and not see pink in October, right? Um, but 40 some odd years ago, it was very different. And so we started the woman to woman hotline which is really the heart and soul of our program because it's led by our volunteers. So. We have professional public health and licensed social workers on staff, but our hotline is really manned and answered by volunteers who are all breast cancer survivors. And so um, we're here every single day, um, even Christmas day, and that those are often days when we receive calls. Um, we receive calls um, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And if you call after hours, can leave a message and someone will call you back the next day. Um, it's a toll-free number. And even though we serve the state, I will fully admit that we get calls from all over the country. We are the oldest breast cancer hotline in the country. Um, and we're very proud of being able to serve the needs of New Yorkers and pair people with individuals with those that have had similar experiences. So for example, we had the first men's support group for men with breast cancer, and we have a male volunteer whose breast cancer has been linked to exposure following um, working at Ground Zero on 9-11. And so we've paired him in the past with other callers that have called because that's a very unique um, circumstance and male breast cancer um, patients often want to speak with someone that maybe not be, may not be a woman, right? Um, and so we're really fortunate to have such a wealth of, um, of volunteers who have such varied experiences, right? being a caregiver, um, not people call, they don't know how to tell their children, they don't know how to tell their families, they don't know how to talk about it with respect to work. And so this is where we can really offer a wealth of resources, where to get a wig. Um, and again, everything is completely free. Um, we also have individual counseling. We have a really wonderful and really rich team of social workers that provide individual counseling. Um, individuals often have like fear of recurrence, um, concerns related to body image and or scars, family concerns, fertility, caregiving. Um, and we have 
We're also very fortunate to have three bilingual social workers who provide social work services on site at Nassau University Medical Center. They're the county hospital and they are on site every Wednesday in breast and oncology. And they often will go other days to oncology based on the needs of patients and they help those individuals with transportation and food assistance, as well as just filling out forms. Because as we know, um, a cancer diagnosis in under general <laughs> terms, um, circumstances is very stressful, never mind just the financial impact and just, just how overwhelming it can be, right? And so we're really fortunate to have a very, very talented team of, of very seasoned social workers at the program. <laughs> This is Adriana Valencia. She's one of our bilingual social workers. And this was um, around the holidays. And I love this photo because it really, like a picture's worth a thousand words, right? And she's, even with her mask on, you can tell that she's smiling. And she sends us this and other pictures with this family. And it really shows the impact of community, right? So we partner with a variety of different, you know, local legislators, community organizations, and this there's a plastic surgical group that every year will sponsor a family. And so the social workers will meet and they'll talk about different families and they'll find someone that maybe really is in need of support and, and is really looking, um, would really benefit from a brighter Christmas, right? And so there's curating of a list and she, Gifts were sent to her at home and she wrapped them herself with her daughter. And then she and her husband went and they delivered the presents to the family. And so it really just shows how much we care and how much thought and how much we work collaboratively as a team. Um, and use we use every resource at her disposal. I mean, there's eight of us on staff for a small program, but there's a lot of heart um, with all of us. And, and we all truly, truly love what we do and who we serve. We have a variety of support groups. Um, we always say as long as there's three people, we can start a group because if there is something really wonderful about having an opportunity to meet other women and or men that are in the same, um, going through the same experience. And all of our support groups are facilitated by either a licensed social worker or a master's level social work intern. We work with interns um, from different facets and areas of the university at Adelphi, which is really, really helpful. Um, just to have an extra um, extra minds we can shape as we as we um, train the next generation of social workers. Our current support groups are um, for individuals with metastatic or stage four breast cancer, women under 40. Um, we have a current um, a group that's forming right now for those that are having a reoccurrence or meaning that, that the breast cancer has returned um, either to the same or a different breast. Um, and then also our creative arts support group, which is, um, that's a topic specific group that will meet for four weeks. And that's a group that people really, really enjoy. And we've been able to do that remotely and we'll send people art materials and that's been really well received. Um, we also have two Spanish language support groups and those are the only support groups that are being held in Spanish um, on Long Island that are professionally led. And so we're really, 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 um, fortunate to be able to provide those needs. One group, Cafecito, is more for survivors, and Para Nuestro Bienestar is more for women that have been recently diagnosed. Um, in the past, we've had support groups for men with breast cancer, as well as other um, topic-specific support groups that include sexuality and nutrition. And we've also had other groups on um, knitting or um, a book club, really survivorship, as well as caregivers. So we, we know that health disparities exist. They always have. Um, I think the past few years has been more of a light that's been shined on this area. Um, so in addition to meeting the needs of individuals that are diagnosed, there is another whole aspect of our program that is really focused on prevention, right? And we really want to reduce disparities among minority populations, specifically African-American and Hispanic women who tend to be diagnosed um, at later stages um, with larger tumors and have lower survival rates. And so one of the ways that we want to address this is by increasing the number of individuals that go for the mammography and or other cancer screenings. 
So we have, we're really fortunate to be able to have um, one of our programs, the Sister, Sisters United in Health, which is um, really um, led by Angelica Medina, who has been with the program for over a decade. She is remarkable in her skills, as well as her context in the community and the trust that people have in her. Um, I think anytime you go to an event, everyone knows who Angelica Medina is. Um, and that says so much about who she is as an individual and as a professional. Um, and we also work closely with Naomi Cunningham, who tends to work um, more on the African-American community. She's part-time. And that, that sort of aspect of the program, they focus on community outreach, health workshops, and mammography referrals and or other cancer referrals. We partner with the New York State Cancer Services Program and provide women with referrals for um, chest exams, breast exams, mammography screening, and pap, screen, pap screenings. And for women or men over 50, they, they can go for um, colorectal screenings or through fit kits. And this is in partnership and collaboration with the New York State Cancer Services Program. It, it, it will work with people um, and see individuals irrespective of their immigration or legal status. Um, and it's a really wonderful program for people that lack insurance and, and lack access because we know that healthcare is a human right and we want to be able to go to underserved communities and find people where they are and make sure that they access care. Right? With the pandemic in general, there's been a very big decrease with mammography screening. At one point it dropped to, it was a 98% drop obviously during the shutdown. And in some communities, people have returned to screening and return to care, but in other communities, those numbers are, have not um, increased. And we're seeing that directly. We're, we're definitely seeing that here on Long Island. So when I think about the program, I, I, I created this snapshot because I think it's a really, like people are visual and it's really helpful to really step back and think about all of the ways that we reach the community, right? Um, and community events have changed and some of them are outdoors and some have been drive-throughs, right? <laughs> Where we used to be in huge health, have huge health fairs, they've changed, but we're still there and we're still finding a way to participate and, and meet people because we know there's such a need, right? And um, we're still providing workshops and referring individuals for free or low cost screenings. And obviously all of the counseling, the hotline support groups, and we provide uh, educational forums on a variety of topics throughout the year. Those are all expert led typically by physicians and or nutritionists or someone that performs Reiki um, because that part of it, I think people are always sort of looking for that programming. And we know that this, these type of programming and these services in general lead to better care um, a return to care, um, accessing services, and ultimately it leads to better health outcomes, right? Which is what we all want. We all want to be healthy and, um, and vibrant. So with that, I will mention um, mammography screening. If you haven't already, if you haven't thought about it, you know, I think we're all thinking about spring and spring cleaning and things to do. And I know we all have many, many things to do, but I think we all have to, it's an opportunity to really remember to take care of yourself. Um, this is our spring ad campaign. This is actually a sneak peek. No one has really seen this yet. We'll be sharing this in April, but it's a really beautiful visual. And there's a, like a, a checklist here on ways you can take care of yourself. And obviously if you have any questions, if you're anxious about going for your mammogram, if you're not sure where to go, if if you've lost your job and you don't have insurance or you're underinsured, um, please call us. We can have someone speak with you and obviously find a facility closest to you where you can access a mammogram. So now I wanna shift gears and, and talk about a few different ways you can take care of yourself, right? And I think over the, with the pandemic, there's been, I think self-care is like, quadrupled in search terms and opportunities and webinars. And, and I think it's important to really think about like what it means, right? Like what is self-care? Um, so if you think, if you look up, um, I looked up the definition from the National Institute of Men Mental Health and self-care really means taking the time to do things that, that help you live well 
and improve both your physical and your mental health. When it comes to your mental health, self-care can help you manage stress, lower your risk of illness, and increase your energy. So even small things have a big impact. Um, and I'm very linear and I have a lot to do and young children and it's just like, when I, I've gone to like these workshops and it's like, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> How do I actually do it, right? And so um, there's some categories that I'm gonna review and I'll share um, a, a resource at the end. Um, this, this is I received from the Happy Healthy Nonprofit and it's a really nice like two page PDF that you can then fill out on the second page and create your own, like basically like your own self-care plan slash to-do list, right? And, and I really am big on starting small. Um, because it's sometimes the only way. It's like, where do I start, right? Um, so, and I also think, especially with something around fitness, <laughs> um, you have to schedule it because otherwise it's just too easy where it just won't happen. Um, sadly, sad but true. <laughs> so in terms of the five different categories for self-care, the first category we'll address is really yourself, right? Um, so, we hear this all, all the time. Exercise, eat better, sleep. And that sounds wonderful, but like that, that's such a broad, <laughs> that's so broad. Um, and so I think sometimes it's just around like starting small, right? Um, so on Wednesdays, I started like, I scheduled like, okay, workout Wednesday. And I, and I literally put it on my calendar and I do it at night when my kids are asleep. And it's been something that's been really helpful for me to remember. And I even tell my husband, like, no, we're not talking about bills at night. Like, we're not talking about what, I, like, this is, I need this time, this 30 minutes. And I, I went on YouTube and I found this lovely yoga instructor who is warm and has a soothing voice. And I've just been following her. And it's, I think it's sort of like anything. Once you start, it's easier, right? It's like putting on your sneakers, staying five minutes, right? Um, and so I really am a proponent of like, just write it down and schedule it because if you make a commitment to yourself, then it, 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 it's more likely to occur, right? Um, one of the things that I want to suggest is the, um, the seven minute workout. It's an app that you can download for free and it li literally has seven minute workouts because one of my, one of our volunteers actually suggested it to me. She was like, this was pre pandemic and she just, she's super healthy. And I was like, not happening. <laughs> And, and she said, Rita, I'm sure you, you have like seven minutes, like just download it, just start, right? And I think that's where you just start. And like half of it is like, you know, agreeing to like look something up. And, and I watched it. I was like, I could do this. And then I still didn't do it, right? And then I like actually scheduled and I was like, okay, this is, I'm going to take the 15 minutes to stretch and, and do this for myself. Um, so that's a really helpful way just to start getting more exercise. Um, I also love the idea of dance breaks and dance parties, especially while you're cleaning or just doing something around the house, right? Um, and then another thing that I really love before, particularly before bed, is journaling, right? And I think this might put you in a place where you can like unwind your day. Um, so really thinking about three things that you're grateful for every day. So if you keep a little notebook and say, you know, gosh, that cup of tea was so delicious, right? Or like that hug from my child or that time with my pet, right? Like going, taking my dog out for a walk after working and being on Zoom calls all day, like that was really special, right? And studies show that if you do, do that every day for six weeks, even it'll improve like your, your state of health, right? Because you'll be able to reflect on your day in a way that is really positive, right? versus thinking about all of the things you didn't do, right? Like what did you accomplish and what was wonderful and what did bring you joy, right? Um, so I wanna focus on sleep because it's one of the things that I think it's just so important <laughs> to your health. Um, you need it to, you need to rest and you need to like, it helps cleanse your brain and improve your immune system and, in general. and. And particularly if you're undergoing treatment and or are a cancer survivor, there's just a lot of changes due to medicine, um, pain, depression, et cetera. Um, and so 
there's some tips here around reducing caffeine and alcohol. And I I'd want to mention tea because I think sometimes we think, oh, I'll drink tea, but depending on the tea, it could have a lot of caffeine, right? So we want to be really conscious of, of what we eat, like particularly with dinner and afterwards, right? And I, I also think it's important that you sort of try to have a regular bedtime and wake up time. Like it's great to sleep in on the weekend, but I think it's like anything, your body really needs to have a rhythm and to have that that time where you can kind of fall into a rhythm and, and you'll naturally be tired and then you'll naturally wake up in the morning, right? At a reasonable time. And it just sets you up for a better day. Great. We'll talk about tech later, but um, in particular, I try not to, I really want to recommend that you not be on your phone right before you go to bed um, because the blue light of a phone or an iPad or whatever it is has been shown to interfere with your sleep. And in general, I think it's just, it's just, it's just time to, you have to put it down just for a little bit. Um, I think all of us use technology so much that it's um, you just have to set healthy boundaries, right? Um, some foods that may help you with sleep are like car-based meals, warm milk, or really anything warm, and then tart cherry juice. So one of the things I've listened to um, is a podcast and it's called Sleep With Me. And it's, it's not like meditation. It's literally someone reading an instruction manual on how to build a coffee table. And it's literally like, uh, blah, blah. but it's not interest. It's not, you know, it's just it's intended to be background noise because sometimes people it's like, and I'm guilty of like, I have so much to do and that to do with And then it's like, you're racing, right? Sometimes like if you have nothing, <laughs> then your mind doesn't know when to turn off, right? Um, so that's been really helpful. Um, I know some people like podcasts, you know, and it's sort of, again, it's something you can hear, but it's literally intended to be background noise. Um, so that's something that I've, I've really enjoyed. Um, something like Reiki or meditation has been really helpful. Um, and there's so much that you can find online or just, you know, do on your own, begin on your own. Um, and something like lavender lotion, like the sense of lavender really helps, creates like a calming effect. Um, and it's just nice, like really before you go to bed to put lotion on your hands and then you can breathe it in and, and just sort of like settle, right? And then there's the power of prayer, right? Irrespective of your faith, I think there's something about really stepping back and, and, and having gratitude and, and um, praying that's really powerful. So the next category is others, right? Something about having like time, like what, especially one-on-one -on -one time, right? With your partner, your spouse, your children. Um, I have a, a phone date with one of my best friends and we, we talk once a month. She lives in New Jersey. And so we can't see her every weekend, but we'll just catch up and we'll just laugh. <laughs> and there's something to be said about how healing laughter is, right? And it's important that you make that time for others in your life because they bring you joy, right? And, and you wanna be present and enjoy that time. And the other piece is like staying away from individuals and influences that are that are negative right and and that doesn't need to be very negative in terms of people sometimes it might just be the activity right so if you're undergoing treatment for for cancer or an illness or you're just exhausted from life in general it's okay to say no right like they may there may be this awesome activity and it may be wonderful but if you're exhausted and you don't feel well it's just it's not gonna be beneficial for you to be present, right? For you to be there. Um, and that's okay, right? So I think sometimes we have a hard time saying no and we shouldn't because we're part of many, many layers and we wanna make sure that all parts of so that, that when you are present, you really are able to be present. Right? It's finally spring. And the flowers are blooming and the birds are chirping and we have more days of sunlight. And that means that we can all spend more time outside, which is such a gift, right? Because I mean, I'm outside all year long. The winters, 
winter is tough. <laughs> so I think we all look forward to spring and what that means in terms of life and renewed life. And um, this really, there's this really wonderful energy um, that comes with spring. And so the third category is, is really the environment. And I'm always gonna be a promoter. I'm a huge proponent for getting outside. <laughs> so, um, there's a Facebook group that a friend told me about, which is Hiking Long Island. And I signed up and I will fully admit, I have not done any of the hikes on the group, <laughs> but part of it is that they post, people people go like, you know, every day or on a weekend and they'll post the most beautiful pictures of like, you know, the sunset, the seals on the beach, you, you know, like the birds, it's really, it's really beautiful. And it's given me a ton of ideas of places I can go. and. There have been people that have posted saying, you know, I have a cane. Can you suggest a place that has a flat trail? And people will comment, you know, or I'm going with my child. Um, what's a place that's stroller friendly, right? So that part has been really, because I'm like, I don't even know about some of these places, right? So like as the weather improves, I definitely have a few places on my list, which I haven't been to. And that I will say, it's just, just where we live. It's, we're just so fortunate with beaches and parks and trails and, and there's so much to explore. And a lot of it is, is free, right? So we're very, very lucky. Um, the libraries. I'm a huge fan of the museum passes, which you can access through your local library and, and book something so that you can check out a place um, that maybe you haven't been to in a while. Like I, I know that's a great way to plan like a staycation. You could be home for maybe a week in the summer and go to a different museum every day. Um, a place in particular that is really lovely for like an inside outside is the Nassau County Museum of Art um, because they have that beautiful sculpture garden, which is all paved. So you can walk it or it's, you can bike it. It's stroller friendly. Um, you know, if you have a cane, um, it's really accessible. And then you could go to the, go to the museum as well, right? Um, so your libraries are wonderful resources for both virtual and in-person programming. So I always wanna mention, mention, you know, a love for libraries. Now, um, one of the things with the environment is, um, materials, chemicals, <laughs> uh, cosmetics, cleaning supplies. This is a huge category that we could speak about for two hours <laughs> and more. Um, but I want to just focus on like small things, right? So like something that might be really helpful is and, and that we all use and, and or should be using is sunscreen, right? So maybe you have something in the cabinet from last year um, and or you're going to buy something new this year. Uh, there's a, a website um, that I would recommend, environmentalworkinggroup.org, um, ewg.org. They review product, a variety of like all different kinds of products, but every year they put out a sunscreen guide and it's fantastic. So you can, you can put in, you know, uh, copper tone SPF 45 and an image of it will show up and they rate it from one to 10. One is best, eight, eight, 10 is worst. And if it's an eight, it'll be red and it will tell you why. It will say, this packaging is not recyclable. This packaging is not biodegradable and or it'll list ingredients. This, this sunscreen has ingredient A, B, C, um, you know, artificial fragrance has been shown to be irritating, the phthalates this or um, depending on what it is. So that's a really helpful what, way that you can maybe make one small change and or be more conscious in what you use um, on your skin every day as you go outside, right? Uh, work and money. <laughs> this is probably one of the most difficult areas, right? It's like we're all working and we're working from home and everything's sort of blended in terms of boundaries and how do we separate between the two, right? Um, so one of the things that I try to do, um, and it's, it's not always successful, but I try to have 50 minute meetings so that when they end, I can get up and maybe go to the restroom. And when I'm in the office, that's really helpful because I have a long hallway uh, where I'm at home, not so much. Um, but trying to create that buffer so that it's not just like screen, 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 meeting, 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 um, so that we have some time to just get up. Um, 
if you're able to, having a walking meeting with a colleague, if it's one-on-one -on -one and you're outdoors now that the weather's improving, if you can meet one-on-one -on -one and, and walk outside. Um, you know, we're at Adelphi University, so we have this beautiful campus. And if we stay on the, on the pathway, there's not cars. So it's relatively easy to have a walking meeting. So not everyone has that luxury. And it also depends on what you're discussing and if something's confidential or what you need to do. But if there's a way you can have a walking meeting, or even if, if you're working from home, if you're in your backyard and you can talk on the phone, just pace in your backyard, it's a, it's a great way of getting outside time as well as um, some steps in. Right. And then some people have standing desks or ways to get up. I don't, but I know that people do, and I think it's really helpful. Some people will stand, work at a standing desk all day, and it's a great way to, to still work, but you know, not spend so much time sitting. Yeah. Um, I love this flow chart. I think it has so many practical uses. And again, it is it's always easier to say to say that to say no. In theory, it's not always practical or possible, depending on the the task. Um, but this is something that you could use for work as well as personal. Like definitely like, oh, there's a plant sale at the PTA. That sounds lovely. <laughs> but maybe not a great time to volunteer to be on the planning committee if you're planning something else, right? If you have this huge deadline with work, right? Oh, you're, you know, that so-and-so is participating in this activity. That sounds great, but that activity costs a lot of money and we're already doing this or we're actually saving so that we can do this over the summer or we just can't to do that, right? Um, because it's too much, right? Um, so I think this is the idea of like, again, going back to saying, saying no and having creating healthy boundaries, right? Because it sounds like it's possible, but a lot of times it's not. And saying no doesn't mean never. It just means not right now, you know? I know at the program, like, again, I share, there's, there's eight of us and people often will come to a program. They're like, oh my gosh, we should do this and this and this. And I'm like, that sounds wonderful, but it's February and we have something planned in March and April. And in my head, I'm like, we're going through June. And so I'm like, so let's have that in June or let's have that in the fall because I'm not saying no, I'm just saying not right now because in my head, I'm like, there's, there's eight of us. Like we have to, you have to be reasonable in what you create and not taking off like you don't want to bite off more than you can chew because it just it snowballs, right? And then everybody's frustrated. So it's just around creating a healthy balance and having healthy boundaries. Right? Um, and the last category is, is technology, right? And this is really hard, especially in this day and age. It's, it's so easy, right? There's something at your fingertips 24 seven. Um, and my younger ones will say, I want to watch train videos and I'm just like why <laughs> you know but that's this is where we are right and and so it's really important that we I'm really conscious of when my kids are have screen time and when they're allowed and they're also young so I can limit it and so in that sense it's easier but there are things like dinner time that it's really I'm like it's really sacred even if the phone rings I won't pick out and sometimes it's it, it can be it has to be like my mom has to hold twice and I have to think it's an emergency because there's time to really sit around the table and have a conversation. Um, so whether you put phones in a basket or leave them, uh, I'll tell them like, let's charge your phone. Let's charge it, you know, to my husband who's always working, right? Uh, because it's important to just try to have healthy boundaries and really be present when you're with your family or your friends, right? And, and this definitely, um, I, I definitely would say that try to keep digital devices out of rooms, out of bedrooms, because again, that interferes with sleep. It's just too easy or in the middle of the night you wake up and then you grab your phone. It's just so, it's just constant, right? So we try to leave ours on the charger so that it's not even in the same room. I hope that this was helpful. Um, I hope that you're able to take little pieces of it. Again, even something like exercise is something that you can maybe do once a week and then with others, it's maybe it's something that you do with your spouse or your friends, um, like once a month. It, it doesn't, I don't think anything can be done all in one day. It's just not possible, right? Um, but I hope that there are pieces here that I shared that you can incorporate in your day-to-day -day life. Right? Um, and now I want to turn it over to Tricia, who's going to share 
her family story and um, how the things that she learned from her mom and that she how she's uh, incorporated that with her family. Patricia. Thank you, Raina. Um, so I, I might actually say some things to overlap with what Raina was just going over with a self care plan um, to some things that we've incorporated into our family. Um, having gone through uh, supporting my mom through her breast cancer journey. Uh, so, but to start at the beginning, my mom was first diagnosed with breast cancer in the fall of 2000. Um, so here we are more than 20 years later. Um, and I can say our family still feels the effects of our mom's journey as it definitely had an impact on, on all of our lives. You know, from the day of her diagnosis and through every chemo treatment, she showed us uh, that attitude is everything. We all had a hard time accepting it and not knowing what it would mean for all of us, what it meant for our mom or her treatment plan or selfishly what it would mean for us and how it would impact our lives. And I remember looking at her and being so upset and she looked at me like I was crazy. And she said, what's wrong with you? And I was like, mom, you have cancer. And I remember her looking at me and saying, so what? You know, I can take this diagnose and diagnosis and let it ruin my life right now, or I can fight it and go on with my life like I was doing yesterday before we knew. And that's exactly what she did. You know, she never asked why me, at, at least not out loud to us. She never felt sorry for herself. She showed us every day that we all have the power to create our own paradigm and make our own decision about how we're gonna feel about something. And I think about this all the time. You know, it comes up for me at work, um, being an, a woman executive and facing a lot of uh, challenges in the workplace. It comes up at home. And I try to remember this moment with my mom. And it's not always as easy as she made it look, um, but that's part of why she was so memorable. You know, attitude, it really is everything. Um, and it's important to remember that. It's, it's one of the key lessons that I took away from going through that battle with her. Um, and keeping that in mind, mom also showed me that if attitude is everything, then perspective is everything else. She never complained about losing her hair. And I know that wasn't easy, but she just, she wouldn't complain. And she acknowledged that it wasn't ideal and she didn't like it, but she never complained again, never why me. In fact, I remember an afternoon with her and my sister in our pool and it was in the afternoon. We were all going out to dinner together later. It was really hot, but my sister and I were both avoiding getting our hair wet because we didn't want to have to do our hair over again before dinner. And well, our mom wasted no time teasing us and pointing out that, you know, she could just pull her wig right off, go swim underwater as much as she wants, do whatever she wanted. I'm sure her hair would be perfectly styled when she went back in the house and put it back on. You know, she didn't love having a wig, and obviously that's not an easy thing to navigate, but my mom found a silver lining, and sometimes that's all you can do. You know, it's another lesson that I really took away from her and that time, and I'm sure everyone can relate to this. You know, How many times are we in the thick of it and something that seems impossible, and it's not fair, nothing can make it better, but always if you slow down, clear your head, and then I'm sure there's something positive you can take away from it. Um, so, so those are so those are two of the lessons that my mom left me with, especially now that I'm older and think back and reflect on that time. I really try to pass these on to everyone in my life, either by sharing stories with my mom or by choosing to lift these lessons every day. And another way that I try to honor my mom at home is by making healthy choices. Um, we'll hear some overlap here between, you know, what I'm doing today to honor my mom in my home and some of the self-care plan that Raina has laid out already. We talk about movement and nutrition a lot these days. You can hear it on the news. You can hear it in just regular sitcom. But in the 80s and 90s, when I grew up, we didn't hear so much about whole foods or eating clean versus unprocessed foods or getting yourself outside for a walk. And as a mom, myself, I, I really try to honor my mom today by finding the healthiest path for myself and my own daughter. We talk about movement and finding ways to be active, even when it's cold out or we're feeling lazy. You know, whether it's hide and seek in the house instead of sitting on the couch, 
or a dance party after dinner. Uh, we try to keep movement as something that we fit in each day. Um, and Reyna's right, sometimes you have to schedule it. You know, like We have our after dinner dance party. It's our routine and it's just something that has come to be part of our schedule. And even when you're super busy and dinner was late because there was a soccer practice and it's almost time for bed and you don't have a shower yet, there's always time for a 30 second dance party or a five minute dance party. Um, it just becomes part of your process. We also focus on whole foods and really work hard to minimize fast foods and processed ones. You know, even after a really long day, I have found that it doesn't take much more time to throw together a stir fry with you know, meat that defrosted in the fridge and frozen vegetables compared to going through a drive through um, And that isn't highly processed and full of chemicals. And even my daughter, who's nine, will point out that you know, she just feels better when she eats food from home compared to the drive through um, So we, we do try to make sure that we're being mindful. Um, lastly, we prioritize our sleep and mental health. We talk about the effects on our bodies when those things are lacking. We both use journals almost every day uh, to reflect on our day, write down what we're grateful for, just to dump our thoughts out on paper. You know, like Rena said, sometimes you're struggling to get to sleep because there's so many things in your head. And I just pull out my journal, put my pen down. I don't care what I write. My handwriting's not neat. Might not even be able to reread it, but just dump out your brain, everything you're thinking of, get it on paper. And a lot of times that helps me kind of just put it to the side. Um, and recently my daughter and I got this mother-daughter journal that we pass back and forth. And that's another fun way that we prioritize our mental health and keep communication open share thoughts that may not be easy to say out loud. And all these little steps is, you know, how I choose health on a daily basis and in a mindful way. And that's how I honor my mom today and her journey with breast cancer. Thanks. Thank you so much, Trisha. That's, um, you know, it's, it's so beautiful what you shared, all the different examples. And, and I feel like I get a glimpse of, of what it must be like in your home, which is filled with love and and dancing and delicious food. So thank you for thank you for sharing that and, and for giving people other ideas and examples that, you know, dance parties and so forth. Because I think it's they're all small ways we can try to improve our health, right? And be better, be healthier um, both physically and, and mentally. So thank you. Um, I want to mention. Huh? Okay. Um, just some upcoming events we have at the program. On May 3rd, we're, we're going to have um, Dr. Sylvia Reyes, who is a surgical oncologist from um, Mount Sinai in New York City, speak about the importance of screening and diagnosing breast cancer. This forum will be in Spanish, but we will have English language interpretation in case um, you're um, not sure about going for your mammogram, you have questions, you've never gone for a mammogram. Um, Obviously, we always want to mention the importance of screening and taking care of ourselves. So that will be on May 3rd at 4 p.m. over Zoom. And then in June, we're hoping to have Tai Chi um, outdoors at, here at Adelphi. We try to have at least one of our uh, forums focus on something that is um, a wellness topic, so nutrition or a movement. Um, and the weather's improving and we're hoping to get outside with some sunshine and we'll be sure to share um, the date and time for that when that event is scheduled. Um, I want to remind people to just follow our program on social media, uh, look for other programs that we have coming up as well as our support groups, the hotline counseling and so forth. Um, and then I wanted to share some resources um, for breast cancer, as well as um, the Nassau and Suffolk County's offices for mental health. In case you need support, I want to make sure that people um, know that it's really important to know. I think the hardest part is knowing when to reach out if you need additional support. So we're here, um, and there are a variety of resources right here um, on Long Island for you to, to access um, should you need. Um, this is my contact information as well as the hotline. Um, thank you all so much. I want to open it up to questions and see if anyone has thoughts, concerns, anything that they want to share about tonight's program. There is something in the chat. 
Thank you so much, Rena. Um, yes, yeah, so um, as Lucia went over earlier, um, there is a Q&A box or you can use a chat to submit any questions or comments that you may have um, for our guest speakers. Again, thank you, Reina and Trisha for your, um, your, your time and, and your collaboration. I definitely learned a lot myself, so I appreciate it. I'm definitely taking it home um, and sharing with my family as well. so much again i think it's like anything i think it's really important that we all take care of ourselves um and i hope that everyone here is able to make time um, and create a plan for yourself your loved ones and, and be healthy and be well absolutely thank you um i'm gonna just give us a couple minutes um but we do you know as you shared your email i'm sure if anyone has any questions or wants to reach out to the hotline um Raina did provide her contact would you mind putting it back up on the screen um just in case somebody wants to take it down I mean, take it, yeah, put it down. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Yeah, okay. I'm happy to speak with anyone, connect people with um, Angelica Medina in case they have questions on where to go for their mammogram, if anyone's anxious and wants to speak with someone about going for their first mammogram, or they haven't gone in a while, they're not sure, um, you know, if they no longer have insurance. Uh, we have staff that are bilingual, um, meaning Spanish speaking, and we also have four different social workers, which are really, really remarkable and can speak with someone if you're going through a diagnosis, if your loved one is going through a diagnosis, or if you're looking for a support group. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, Reina. I'm going to turn it over to Lucia for any uh, closing remarks. Thank you, Dr. Lucia. Absolutely. Wow. I am so grateful to have had both of you here today. Really, it was very powerful, very impacting. Um, you know, all these things I think we hear, but putting into practice, it really step by step, right? One step at a time. And I love what you shared about, and I just want to say um, about the self-care plan. It's just amazing, you know, how sleep plays a big part of it, you know, how you exercise, um, eating healthy. Uh, both of you touched that. And it's just amazing that if we focus on the little things, you know, we can accomplish so much. So I just want to thank you for really, you know, um, creating this awareness, really, um, and just reminding us really how to take care of our bodies, because this is the most beautiful thing we have. And this is something that we have to cherish. And, and Trish, you know, it's just so amazing, the positive mental attitude that your mom had, you know, so beautiful to know that it could take you um, and make a choice of being happy, you know, and it's just so beautiful to learn how she experienced that and how you also grew and, and learn how to really be happy um, by thinking positive and the fact that you have a journal, you know, with your daughter, that's so beautiful, that connection that you're making with her and that's going to make a difference in her life too. So I just want to thank you for sharing this beautiful you know, um, this beautiful uh, ideas and information and really it's an honor that you're able to honor your mother this way that you able to remember her with such beautiful uh, memories, you know, and um, I like what also what Raina said just real quickly, you know, the power of prayer, you know, how to be grateful, how to have that gratitude. So you ladies were so powerful with your message tonight. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of Senator John Brooks. Um, you know, again, thank you for the staff. Always Melody does an amazing job when it comes to doing the whole presentation. Joe with the communications director, but uh, Senator Brooks really for putting this um, and, and giving us this opportunity, this platform to bring this beautiful and valuable messages to our community. So I want to thank you both again, and also those that are, are, are watching us tonight. And I hope that you took notes as well. Um, if you did not, you could always view this. So we always have this in um, Senator Brooks' Facebook page. So you could always watch the previous, um, actually, the previous um, we had, the series. And then you can watch this one. And also, uh, just remember that we have an upcoming lecture, which is the last one, March 31st at 6 p.m. I think we might have lost uh, Lucia. 
um, but I will pick up where she left off. Um, our last lecture series um, will be next Thursday and it's going to be surrounding the topic of domestic violence um, and empowerment. So we welcome, um, you know, we, we ask you and, and, well, and definitely uh, invite you to join us um, for that topic and that conversation again. Um, as Lucia was mentioning, um, you know, the lecture series has definitely been around providing a, a space to have these conversations that maybe are not talked about and, and are tend to be taboos, um, but it's something that benefits our community and especially us as women. So um, again, thank you so much, Reina and Trisha for your time. Um, we really appreciate everything that you do for our communities and for, um, you know, being together with on this platform with us this evening. Um, I think we have Lucia back. I think I, I picked up where you left off, but if, if you have anything else. <laughs> Sorry, I got disconnected, but thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lucia. Thank you, ladies. Um, and I hope you, you all have a great evening. Thank you to our attendees as well for um, sticking around with us this evening. Have a great night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.